today we're going to talk about the public firing of Nigel Farage. Recently, Nigel Farage was still on his radio station, LBC. Well, it's not his, I mean, he doesn't own the thing, but he was a presenter, uh, a radio presenter um, on LBC, okay? And he would, he basically had his own phone in show, and members of the public could phone in and talk to him, and he would argue with the public on various matters of politics or other issues it is what he has done for the last three years and recently um, he has been fired there's no easy way of saying it the radio station has fired him within the last week okay um, you probably heard in America there was a there's some sort of uh, upset because um, a black person was arrested by the police and murdered by the police okay obviously I know there's a court case pending to decide whether or not this black man was murdered or not but as far as everybody was concerned he was clearly murdered by the police okay but obviously anything else is just um, you know a bunch of intellectual lawyers arguing a case which will happen okay over here in Britain there were similar protests after that happened one protest involved the statue of a former slave trader being pulled down in the city of Bristol that statue was then thrown into water okay and some people thought that was a great thing and others such as Nigel Farage disagreed with it he said publicly that the actions of those who pulled down the statue of the former slave trader in Bristol um, were similar to those in the Taliban who destroyed statues and other things His comments were not popular with a lot of presenters at the radio station and also some other workers who happened to be black or from ethnic minorities at the radio station. Therefore, LBC, which, it, which stands for Leading Britain's Conversation, it's changed the um, acronym over many over several years. The letters have always been the same, but it's changed the meaning of those letters over time. As originally it started out as a London only radio station and, and has now become nationwide. Um, the radio station has put out a wishy washy um, statement stating. that he had left with immediate effect they said that they thanked him for the enormous contribution he'd made and this was the reasons um, that they gave but it was very wishy-washy they said Nigel's contract with LBC is up very shortly and following discussions with him Nigel is stepping down from LBC with immediate effect in other words he will no longer be on the air they said we thank Nigel for the enormous contribution he has made to LBC and wish him well. As stated, he has been a radio presenter on LBC for the last three years. Um, other things it mentions. One of the um, other presenters on the radio station, who's not a fan of his, tweeted, um, that means he wrote on Twitter, we got our station back. This is from the BBC. This is another one from Business Insider. 
where they say they've got the inside scoop on it. Sources at the station, which is quite possible, told Business Insider his departure followed intense disquiet among his former colleagues about comments he made this week about Black Lives Matter. Farage compared, and this was on air, compared BL, um, Black Lives Matter protesters who downed a statue of a slave trader this week to the Taliban. Sources say the comments angered BAME staff and others at the station. And I've just covered it uh, about him leaving. Also from the Independent, it says Farage quits LBC radio station amid backlash over Black Lives Matter comments. Um, this was part of what he himself had to say on a on a TV station um, this week. Because they did it as a violent mob making their own decisions on what they thought was right and wrong. If the people of Bristol, and, and bear in mind that Edward Colston made a lot of money out of the Royal African Company, a lot of money, all right? He then was a big philanthropist and there are many public buildings all oh, over Bristol. Yeah, yeah. After Edward Colston, Jimmy the history of the history of Bristol, the history of Bristol. Okay, so that's some of the comments he made. Um, you know, he seemed to be publicly against the protesters and seeming to support this tr slave trader. Um, it's become a big political issue over here at the moment. Um, the London Mayor, who happens to be of um, Pakistani origin, he's born in England, but his parents were from Pakistan, um, has ordered um, an investigation into the statues in London to see what statues should be removed, if any of the statues are of people who were um, mistreated or were involved in the mistreatment of black and ethnic minority groups, for example, in the past. Um, there's a current debate as to what statues should and should not be allowed to be um, exhibited anymore in public. The idea is that, um, for example, I believe it's Edward Colston, a statue will, after it's been dumped into the water, will be recovered, but it will not be put back in pride of place where it was originally, but instead it intends to be moved to a museum where they will um, describe what a complete scumbag he was for supporting the slave trade. Whereas originally his um, statue was in Pride of Place within the um, city centre where it was meant to show how great a person he was or something along those lines. Okay. You have to bear in mind that um, over time, many values have changed regarding slavery. At the time, slavery was seen in a positive light, wrongly in my opinion, um, but those were the times. Now, slavery is rightly seen as very bad, and um, slave traders, it's believed, should no longer be celebrated publicly so there you go and as i said the independent state nigel farage quits with backlash over black lives matter comments um and it said after protests erupt in the uk over the death of george floyd in america Mr. Farage claimed a new form of the Taliban was born in the UK and described Black Lives Matter as a far-left Marxist organisation that wants to abolish the police and dismantle capitalism. Um, so, there you go, guys. That's current breaking news in Britain. 
Nigel Farage, the man who got um, Donald Trump into the White House, <coughs> has been realistically fired. Okay? Officially, they have quit by mutual agreement, but even then, normally, if they just decided they were bored of a presenter and wanted another one to come in, unless the presenter was absolutely diabolical, they would usually be allowed to continue until their contract ended, rather than um, their contract be rather than their rather than them leaving the station immediately. Okay, as I said, normally they'd just let them, you know, finish off their contract and another presenter would come in and carry on, usually, if, you know, the leaders of the owners of the, um, you know, radio station just thought they'd, they could find someone better. Normally, people only leave with immediate effect if they have, in reality, been fired because they've said something very bad and the station wants to distance itself from them. And by Nigel Farage um, quitting with immediate effect, i.e. he was realistically fired, it means LBC can now side with the black community and say, well, Nigel Farage is no longer a presenter on our ra at our radio station. And so it, they have basically sacrificed him in order to appeal to um, Antifa and you know whatever the Antifa equivalent is over here um, and appease the black community so there you go many people have asked me for my views my views on this are I think Nigel Farage may be a nas an out of date nationalist it is actually ironic in some way that Nigel has been fired for racism when he himself quit UKIP because he claimed UKIP had become racist. It's ironic that he quit UKIP and then set up a brand new party called the Brexit Party because he said he no longer wants to be associated with UKIP as under the new leadership of UKIP it had become very racist and he did not wish to be associated with racists. And it's ironic that he quit... Oh, a political party who was a member of for many, many, many years over racism, and set up his own party because he didn't like the racism of the former party he was a member of, um, and he himself has realistically, in real terms, been fired for racism and for appearing to support racism. My personal view on this is. It was about time that um, statues of the supporters of slavery and the oppression of black people should be removed. They do not belong in modern Britain, in my opinion. Not publicly where they're being celebrated. But it's very difficult because times change. Um, many news, many TV presenters over here have apologised for in the past, within the last week, have apologised for blackfacing. That means covering their white face with some sort of black makeup to make them look black. Now, I think personally, there is some hypocrisy on this. For example, if a lot of comedians have got some polish and put it on their um, ha on their heads and tried to look like black people to poke fun at famous black people like Michael Jackson or others um, pe some people have gone ballistic but when for example Donna Summer and yes the Donna Summer from the 70s the exact same Donna Summer who you know sang songs like I Feel Love and songs like that um, decided to whiteface in I believe the um, either late 80s or 90s and appeared 
on the cover of one of her albums, which I personally bought, okay, White Faced. Okay. Then, the whole, then nobody bats an eyelid. Nobody cares about it. And when Lenny Henry, who, by the way, has been given a knighthood, and he's a black person, who has been given a knighthood, okay, and for those Americans, over here, black is seen as a neutral, positive term, okay? I think black in America is considered offensive. Over here, black is considered a neutral, positive, um, matter-of-fact term, okay? Right? Um, what Americans might call a person of colour, okay? Right? Um, as I said, Lenny Henry is a person of colour, or black, depending how you want to describe it. He's been given a knighthood for basically being a famous comedian and for charity work and he himself did a film called True Identity where he himself white faced okay to poke fun at white people effectively yet nobody got up in arms about that so when black people have been um, mocked and parodied of uh, particularly famous ones um, the white people who've done it have apologised. But when a black person pokes fun at white people, or someone like Donna, someone had never poked fun, but just actually appeared to be more white, nobody cared. Nobody's probably even aware of it. Most people probably can't even remember it or don't even know about it. And there hasn't been an out. And uh, well, about that now, in absolute fairness, Donna Summer cannot possibly apologise for what she's done in the past because she's no longer alive. But Lenny Henry is alive. But I've never heard him apologise once for poking fun at white people in his film. And for those who wanted to see it, this is the Donna Summer white face album cover. OK, now it really was her. It wasn't some a white person being shown, um, an alternative white person being shown. It is really her under that. And I saw a Stock Aiken and Waterman, who were the producers of the album, um, documentary, where it showed you her personally in a makeup chair. OK, now nobody is up in arms um, over the white facing of by Donna Summer on her this particular album and this is an album cover so this is the first thing you would see if you walked into a record shop and looked at this album okay unless it was turned around the wrong way okay and on the back of it it showed you her normal face okay okay i know because i personally bought it okay because I happen to be a fan of Stock Aiken and Waterman's music. Okay? But as I said, no, but there was no uproar about this. And as this rare footage reveals, even the image was part of the Hit Factory package that would bring Donna Summer back into the charts. On the BBC News side, dated the 4th of December 2015, this is Lenny Henry being knighted. For services to drama and to charity. When I got the letter, 
to say, would you like it? I just thought my mum would have loved this, so I just thought, okay, go on then. This is the trailer for True Identity by Lenny Henry. Okay? This film was made before he was given a knighthood. Okay? Miles, feel your roots. Say, baby, didn't I tell you to At the moment, he just appears black. Crib? Miles, you're not black enough. Get down with your bad self. Hey, You'll see him white baby, face in a moment. Hey, you come by my crib with my bread. That's it. What it is? Miles Pope thought he'd hit bottom. I'm an actor, Harvey, not a piece of fruit. Until the mob decided to hit him. By this time tomorrow, I want that poop kid dead. Now the only way he won't get whacked. Cut him up and make sandwiches. I gotta disappear now. Is to give the performances of his life. Ah! Uh, the unit itself has got some high ceilings that are highlighted with a kind of a synthetic gold flex. Hey! It's Lord Percy Chisley P.D. Smythe of South Worcestershire upon Avon speaking. That's him. But Miles is such a master of disguise. This is him hey, white facing. Oh, Look, uh, I'll buzz you back when I'm selling there, okay, babe? He's been hired by the mob. I want Pope dead to whack himself. Ah! Piece of cake. <laughs> Touchstone Pictures presents One Man's Quest to Save His Skin. Just feed the fish and you whack them. <laughs> yeah, well, us hit guys hey, hey, hey. gotta maintain a high standard. I'm a mulatto. From the waist down, that's how it happens sometimes. Another day, another wackaroni audio. Can't believe that punk kid fooled me. True identity. Yeah, well, he fooled me too, boss. King Kong in a dress would fool you. Here, I'm using a browser called Dillo. Because it bypasses all the stupid um, popovers, okay? If you use a normal one, it's got a popover which says you need to give them money to see it, okay? But this is an article... In the, in the Telegraph, and it says, Lenny Henry, Piers Morgan, and ten other Brits who flopped in America. Okay, and here you'll notice it says And if you look at this bit it says unfortunately the first film in that deal was true identity an inept caper comedy About a black actor who disguises himself in whiteface in order to flee the mob After the film flopped Henry's free picture deal was hastily reduced to one. In other words, that was the only picture that was made. Um, and this film was made for Disney, okay? So there you go. Okay? Evidence that a British knight of the realm white face to poke fun at white people. Okay? Now it seems that, as I said, when white people black face to poke fun at black people, the whole world goes ballistic. But when white pe but when black people white face to poke fun at white people, white people are just meant to take it. My view is this there is serious racism which I'm against. But I am not against poking fun at people if it is genuinely funny and not too offensive, okay? And if a white person wanted to dress up as Michael Jackson to poke fun at Michael Jackson and wear blackface to poke fun at Michael Jackson while he was alive, I wouldn't have cared. And if a black person such as Lenry Henry wants to whiteface to poke fun at white people, I don't mind that many white celebrities, for example. I'm not sure if he ever did any white celebrities, but if he did, I would defend that as well. Okay? In fact, and this may surprise you, Lenny Henry, who as I said is a black person, white-faced to poke fun at Michael Jackson when Michael Jackson had a whiter appearance. 
the Michael Jackson you see in this clip is actually played by the black Lenny Henry. Okay? <laughs> That's the guy on the left, not him. I just love the English That's accent. Him. Can you do an English accent? Who, me? Oh. Not really. Well, go on, have a go. Okay. Hello, you are right? I'm just doing the boom. <laughs> Gives a bad love. I'm spitting feathers. Jobber, <laughs> jobber. How's that? Well, I wouldn't give up the day job. Watch your mouth, you, you big jobber. <laughs> That's very funny. Now, Michael, you're particularly well known for your amazing dancing. Oh, Martin, you're so sweet. You are fantastic. <laughs> you're so kind. Can you show me how it's done? Oh, no, I couldn't. I'm too shy. Oh, come on, please. No, man, no, really. It's surely. A, I'm a bit too embarrassed. No? Okay, let's move on to something else. Okay, but well, if you really insist. <laughs> it's kind of like, um... Kind of like that. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Thank you. Can you dance? Me? No. No, no, no. No, I can't at all. Oh, come on, man. No, really. I've got three left feet. Well, let me break it down for you. Come no, on, no, it's easy bits. Come on. Okay, okay. Well, I, uh, no, I, I'm going to be terrible. I'm going to be absolutely no, yeah, terrible. Well, let's try. What's this now? Okay, this? well, this is the moonwalk. Moonwalk, okay. Okay, you push down. Push. I mean, it's heel. It's heels, okay. Heel. No, I can't do this. I can't do this at all. Sorry, I'm terrible. <laughs> yes, that's pretty good. No, I can't. I can't. This room is full of pictures of Wallace from Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. You must really love him. Yeah, I do love him. I am Wallace. Why do you identify so strongly with him? Well, we're both made out of plasticine. What else do you collect? I'm a real collector of art. I respect great craftsmanship. I mean, look at this. Isn't it beautiful? It is beautiful. Would you like to have a game? Oh, no. Chess is for grown-ups. I don't know the rules. Oh, no, don't worry. I can teach you. What do you want to be? Black or white? That's not funny, Martin. That's just ignorance. Michael was clearly riled. I decided to change tack. You had a very hard childhood, didn't you? Yeah. Your father used to beat you. That must have been very hard. No, not really. Because he would hit me, and I'd go, Ow! Ow! <laughs> I wouldn't have developed my unique sound without him. But your father was cruel to you. Yeah. Sometimes I'd see other kids playing in the park, and I'd want to go join them. And my father would say, No, Mikey, you can't play. There's another check for $200,000. We've got to go to the bank and cash it. Do you cash a lot of checks? Yeah. <laughs> there were an awful lot. And was it just checks? <laughs> oh, Martin. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> no. There were bankers' drafts. <laughs> and sometimes he would just throw money at us. Big wads of cash. Really? And I would hide behind a pile of gold ingots in my bedroom, but he would always find me and keep, keep me money. Michael, <laughs> this isn't an easy question to ask, but could you give me some of your money? No. Just a bit. I said no. You got that right? Did we get this? Michael took me on a shopping expedition. This is mine? This is it was the single most tasteless shop I had ever seen. <laughs> Michael, this is an exquisite shop. <laughs> Show me what you've bought. Oh, I love collecting beautiful things. Um, like this? So nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Martin, have you seen these? They're adorable. I'll take them. 
Hello, excuse me. Excuse me. Do you have these in white? Yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo. Tell me, Michael, there's been a lot of talk about your face. Oh, thank you very much. Well, no, hang on. The question is, how many operations have you had on it? Okay, Martin, I'm going to level with you. What a lot of people don't know about me is I have this genetic condition that makes my nose small and pointy. It's called small pointy noseitis. Okay, I'm going to end the clip there. But something to bear in mind, okay? And that's this. What you probably did not realize is this clip was an official fundraising clip for charity. Lenny Henry purposely white-faced to look like the white version of Michael Jackson in order to, uh, for the, as part of a BBC um, charity show, No, I'm not making this up. I'm deadly serious. Okay? So this was done on the BBC, paid for by the BBC, as part of a charity campaign. This was an official BBC comic relief um, charity telethon. Okay? And so this was not even just a normal show. This was something done by the BBC itself as part of an official BBC fundraising campaign for something called Comic Relief. Okay? And having looked more into this, Comic Relief is about poverty in general worldwide. Okay? And Lenny Henry, the black guy, that the black community I've been talk discussing was one of the people who actually helped to set up Comic Relief at the BBC. Okay? And it says, and one of the reasons why he was given a knighthood. Okay? It says, what your money does. This is on the official Comic Relief website. It says, Comic Relief raises money to support people living incredibly tough lives through humour and stories of hope. We've shown that people can make a massive difference. We fund hundreds of amazing organisations who work on the ground to support the most vulnerable people and communities in society. I believe this is worldwide. This includes vulnerable people and young people, people who are homeless or living in extreme poverty, women and families at risk of domestic abuse, and those struggling with existing or new mental health problems. Improved mental health. Every year, 450 million people worldwide experience mental health problems. We're tackling mental health stigma as well as making sure people get the support they need. Ensure people have a safe place to be. Having a safe place to call home is a fundamental right of every person on the planet, but around the world is shocking. One in five people don't have the shelter they need. We're working to put that right. Help children to survive and thrive. Every year, millions of children still die before their fifth birthday or grow up in poverty and neglect. Great progress is being made, but it's not happening fast enough, and with your help, we're taking this on. No fear of violence or discrimination. Um, some of us... And says, the idea that some of us are worth less because of our gender leads to real violence, which costs lives. We work with organisations right on the front line to help people speak out and seek help so they can escape fear of violence and intimidation. So basically, Lenny Henry, who is one of the um, people who set up um, this charity, which is provided by the BBC, uh, decided that um, white-facing and to, dis to make himself look like the white version of Michael Jackson was perfectly okay. He did it for comedy reasons and absolutely nobody went ballistic about it but if a white person decides to blackface people would, go, would have gone absolutely ballistic nowadays hypocrisy of course but there you go my complaint is the lack of consistency if you're going to condemn white entertainers for black facing you should also equally condemn black entertainers such as Lenny Henry for white facing
But, of course, nobody dare criticise black people for white-facing because it is too racially sensitive. But, if white, but as I said, many um, of our entertainers in the last week or so have publicly apologised for black-facing in the past, but I've never heard Lenny Henry or any other black entertainers publicly apologise for white-facing if they did in fact white-face. But there you go. So that's my views on all this. Thanks for watching. Bye.